We're actually going to look at two different ways to save messages for later analyzation here. One of them being the syslog server, which I mentioned a couple times. We're finally going to configure here. And also buffer logging. And buffer logging is our one that is actually disabled by default. You see it here in the middle of R1, show logging. And by the way, I did a write erase on this router since the last video. So I just opened a couple of interfaces, but any previous logging commands are gone. And we see console logging, that's at the level of debugging, the highest level you can set. Uh, 29 messages logged, because that's about how many you're going to get. Just started a router up, opened a couple of interfaces, got a couple of messages. Uh, and with buffer logging, though, that's disabled by default. And you might be looking at this and saying, OK, that's great, but where's the syslog information? That's going to be at the very bottom. And occasionally with this command, you're going to have to hit the enter key or the space bar to get that last bit of info. And while we see information here for trap logging, you know, we're trapping it to the syslog server, if you will, the thing is it's really not enabled because we haven't told this router where the syslog device even is. So we will take a look at that in just a moment. But first, let's go ahead and get buffer logging up and running, and I'll show you how to access that info because first off, it's disabled. We need to enable it, and the proper command is logging buffered. And that's right at the very top. Usually you just see logging buffer. We get tired. We don't want to type those last two letters. But let's go ahead and take a look at the options here. And the vast majority of these look a little familiar. We see first off at the top that you can, you can change the severity level. We'll see the default in just a moment. But you can change the severity level numerically. You can change it with the word that uh, is assigned to that particular number. iOS help is nice enough to tell us, for instance, that severity level 1 is alerts. The exam, of course, will not be as kind. So we have those, but we also have something a little bit different here, and that's the logging buffer size. And really, you don't want to go insane setting this to the maximum because, of course, whatever buffer space you assign here, you're taking buffer space away from other things. So you don't want to make the log as large as possible. We want to be selective, especially in real-world networking, about what we're logging, what we're not, and how large we make buffers. So let's go ahead and just accept the defaults and see what those defaults are with, what else? Show logging. And you can see here in the center, that buffer logging is now enabled. And we already logged a message. And XML filtering, not concerned with those right now. We'll save those for future studies. And there's the size of your buffer next to exception logging. And it's 4,096 bytes. Again, you can change that with the logging buffer command. We saw the option right there, logging buffer size. And that is in bytes. So notice here at the bottom now that I have information that I didn't have 30 seconds ago. And that is the log buffer. It's under trap logging. It's at the very bottom. And again, the screen is nice enough to tell us the size of the log buffer right now is 4,096 bytes. And there is the latest message that we got. And it wrote that to the buffer. And it, if you just have a few commands you think you need to log and you want to read them back to back, this is a great way to go. Nothing wrong with that at all. Again, just be careful about making the log as large as you possibly can. Now, when it comes to the syslog server, though, that's, that's where, of course, we're sending the information to another device. We can access that later. But what we have to do here on the router, of course, is set a couple of commands. And actually, there are a couple involved here. Let's go ahead and do uh, logging. And we're going to need a couple of them. The first one is host, set syslog server IP address and parameters. Sounds good to me. Now, the other one we might not have to use if we accept that default, but trap is set syslog server logging level. So your two syslog server specific commands, not an easy thing to say, logging host and logging trap. So if you go with logging host here, you're going to be able to put either your version 4 or your version 6 address here. And if you wanted to go with the version 6, just put IPv6 in there and then the now familiar IP version 6 address format. But if we wanted to go with a classic version 4, you could just put 172.12.123.2 if that was the address. And that's it. You've got some extra options here, but again, not something we're going to get into today. So we'll go ahead and just set that and then run show logging and see what the readout is now.
And we got a little message there. We got all kinds of stuff going here. We have a logging host start stop message. We haven't seen one of those before. And logging to host 123.2 port 514 started. And you also see that down here in the buffer. So our buffer is starting to add up as well. And here's your information, logging to. That's a good UDP port to remember, UDP port 514. The link is up. We've had a couple of lines logged, etc., and it goes forward from there. Now, let's run a show logging again. We kind of had a line pop up in the middle there. And notice now, oh, there it was, trap logging level informational. It's a little bit different as a default. We see that console and monitor and buffer logging all have debugging as their defaults, but here with trap logging, we uh, the informational level is the default level. So if you wanted to change that, all you'd have to do is go in and it's logging trap. And then you're going to have your severity levels. If I want to set that to three, I could. And there's another console message. It's going to show up in our log. And you can see that now we changed the level successfully to errors. Here it's going to give you the word and not the number. But again, really nothing to it as far as syslog goes you know that that's just about it of course you know it depends on what kind of device you have there as far as the extra configuration goes but that's not part of our studies right now and with buffer logging you can see the message is starting to add up at the bottom and you can also see here where fine tuning it with a with a numeric level can come in handy because if your log your log buffer is going to fill up pretty fast if you're logging everything at levels five and six especially five and if you're doing a lot of config you're going to fill it up with configured from console by console. That's going to get a little hard to read after a while. But that is it for logging as far as buffering, uh, logging it to the buffer and syslog. And I got a little choked up there just thinking about the next video because I have a fantastic real world scenario for you with logging. Probably going to show up on your exam one way or the other, but you'll definitely run into it in the real world. And I want you to know exactly what's going on. And that is coming up next.